So I began struggling with masturbation. What is that that you have in your hand? I told her, my friend has told me it is pornography. I don't want anything to do with pornography because it was a very shocking thing for to expose my eyes. But truth be told, already the damage was done. There was this, they used to come and disciple us and they were really awesome, just Dave. And um, together with Alan and Beryl, wherever you are guys, shout out to you. You really, really helped me during that time. But there's one thing that if I did at that time, it will have corrected all the mistakes that I later on did. The problem is I used to be very secretive about these struggles. And again, as I had mentioned earlier, that secrecy is the breeding ground of sin. If you want sin to thrive, and if you want it to grow, just keep something in the dark. Just keep it to yourself. Keep secrets. Because sin is very territorial. It wouldn't want you to expose it. So it will do everything by discouraging you, putting you into a shameful situation and guilt. And that is why it reaches a point where you have to be exposed. So even I, so that I could stop with all these struggles, I was exposed as I shall share in the testimony as time goes, okay? So I never opened up and these guys were so approachable, but I never opened up. I used to keep quiet because as much as they used to be Christians and all that, they used to come with different people, but most people, they never used to share testimonies of their struggles. Most people used to share testimonies of how salvation, you know, the same kind of testimonies that like I've never seen before, kind of testimonies. And I would look and I would like, how will they understand me? Won't they judge me? That is where I have decided to put my life out there for people to hear. Because if somebody like me came to our high school and testified that they had struggled with masturbation and that they came out of it, I would have found, I would have found hope. I would have found, you know, I'm going to overcome this because it reached a point where it was so controlling, you know, and I just, and as time was going by, it was becoming slowly and slowly addictive. But if somebody stood and shared their testimony about what they struggled and how they overcame, I'm so sure I would have made a better choice. But nobody usually shares testimonies, and that is why I am here and I'm sharing my story so that that girl. That guy, wherever you are, if you have, you're struggling with exactly what I went through, you went through child abuse, you went through masturbation and all those things, that you can find hope. If you are struggling with it, one advice I can tell you is that you need to open up. Don't muzzle, don't keep quiet, don't let the devil shame you into keeping quiet. Don't let guilt trap you into not speaking out because eventually sin turns out into a forest. It is a seed but it can grow into a forest. But because I kept it to myself, it continued to grow in my life. And after the pornography thing, it now even became worse. But um, in Form 3, my mom started getting sickly. She was sickly. And um, I remember I was like, I, don't, I didn't understand what was happening with mom. But I was hoping she would get better. But uh, when my mom was sickly, she got a bit distant from me. That is what I can describe it. I really desired friendship with my mom as much as I was a teenager I wanted to talk to my mom sit down and talk to her but because I was not used to voicing out what I really felt I used to muzzle up and keep what I felt and I never used to speak up or give my opinions every time I would rehearse in my mind how I would tell her how I would like to be a friend to her and all that but I never voiced out and now she was sickly and I remember she was distant because I'm so sure she was worried because she didn't know what it was. She had been to several times in the hospital. They didn't find anything. So she was a bit worried and she became distant. That is another advice. If you're raising teenagers or you're a teenager and you desire to go and, you know, talk to your parents, you want them to become your friends because you're going through this phase, please don't let fear and intimidation block your way. You need to approach your parents. You need to talk to them. Your parents really care. And they really love you and also as parents become approachable because already if you see i'm having a problem approaching her it means that we were not very close with my mom but i desired that closeness and it's something that i really yearned for 
and unfortunately on August that same year when I was in form 3 my mom was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer breast cancer it had spread all over her body and within a month she had passed on it was so fast so fast and then I was like I didn't get to tell my mom how I felt I never voiced up I never found my voice to tell my mom you know what I want I wanted us to be friends I wanted us to be spending time with each other I never got that opportunity and now she was gone she was no more because I didn't have a voice I didn't know how to voice and speak up for myself and now she was gone and now I was feeling guilty I was so feeling so bad and then at the same time I, I developed anger towards God like why did you allow my mom to pass you'll have done something also there was that part and also there was a bit of bitterness that got to my heart and now the whole masturbation issue was not for you know it now became a coping mechanism to try and pull suppress the emotions that I was feeling I needed to vent out so I used to now vent out through masturbation and now it became worse I, I would even go out of class during preps go and masturbate on the in the toilets and then come out run back to class and now it started it's, it now became I now became a slave to masturbation at this point and then I couldn't talk I was like how will people people will judge me people you know the devil will lie to you that people will judge you that people will shame you that people will get strip you but that's not the case but I listened to that voice which was louder than the voice of like I need to open up to somebody so life went on and uh, I remember my mom's death really did have a blow in my life because now my mom is the one who used to discipline me my mom is the one who used to I used to spend more time with my mom and now here it is now I have to spend time with my dad now my dad has to discipline me and because my dad was very very scared you know you're having a 16 year old girl and now you have to parent her on your own now he became controlling and I remember I started now being rebellious before we could find a working system with my dad it really took a lot of time but my dad was like he was he was like how do i do this how do i take care of a teenager i don't even know how, where to begin so my dad tried his best to try and become both my mom and my dad and uh, so i finished high school and now there's this tradition at our home that when you finish high school back then you are given a phone a smartphone as a way to show now you have graduated to the next phase of life and my dad bought me a smartphone my first smartphone and again the voice came back it was like why don't you try watching pornography pornography you know watch pornography nobody will see you nobody will know you remember there was a door that was opened in my life when i was in form two and now that i have finished two years down the line almost two and a half years down the line i started having this you know thing about pornography now whatever i had opened up myself to was now coming back for me and i started watching again pornography I would now google pornography I now had earphones i could now get under the sheets and nobody would know so there is where i started another struggle you see i never opened up so the struggle became something else and now i was addicted to pornography and now i was addicted to masturbation and you know what when with pornography when you continue exposing yourself eventually when you expose your soul whatever you're seeing you will want to do you will want to experiment because that is how the soul is what you feed your soul is what you will eventually do so i remember i got to campus that is now i i got to campus and that is where there is a lot of freedom everybody who has been to campus especially public campuses there is usually a lot of freedom and someone can really mess up if they misuse their freedom and now i am out of home I'm, my dad is not there there's no control there's nothing now there is freedom and i remember i just knew this guy just roughly we're not even in a relationship we are not even dating or anything but because of what i had what i had been watching and what i had been i had been feeding myself i started you know now i became sexually active i now started engaging in the physical part of sex 
and that opened a whole other door in my life you know everything just little by little step by step leads to so many things and now the door was getting wider and wider and wider and because there was no relationship there's this part that i didn't expect you know when you're watching pornography and then reality are two different things there's this part of emotions your emotions are now invested in this other person there's this part of soul ties you're getting tied with this person you you're getting entangled in the soul with this person because the bible says the two of you shall become one so when you have sex with somebody it's not only a physical thing there's the spiritual aspect of it where the soul and his soul and her soul or her soul and his soul they get connected through a soul tie 